Hello everyone, I am Harsh and today we are going to discuss the 29th problem from CP31 sheet by TLE Eliminators under the 1100 rating range. So let's move on to TLE Eliminators website. This is the CP31 sheet, 1100 rating box is checked and here is a clickable link to your 29th problem. So let's move on to the problem. So the name of the problem is paint the array. So you are given an array A consisting of N positive integers and you have to choose a positive integer D and paint all the elements into two colors. All elements which are divisible by D will be painted red and all other elements will be painted blue. The coloring is called beautiful if there are no pairs of adjacent elements with the same color in the array. Your task is to find any value of D which is a beautiful coloring or report that such a coloring is impossible, okay? So you are given the size of the array as 100. The numbers in the array are uh, of the range of 10 power 18 and the number of test cases are of the order of 1000. And it is not mentioned over there that the number of, uh, that the sum of all n or sum of n over all the test cases does not exceed some value. It is not mentioned over there. So while Calculating the time complexity, I also have to account for this test cases loop. Okay, cool. So let's see what actually the question wants us to do. So in the question, they have told that they have given you an array of size n, a1, a2, up till a n. And you are selecting a positive integer d. And you are going over all the numbers in this array. If any ai is divisible by d that is on dividing it by d we get remainder as zero then you are painting ai painting this index i with red color and if d does not divide ai then you are painting index i painting index i with blue color. Now they have told you that this particular coloring or coloring the index, particular index with either a red color or blue color is called beautiful if there is no pair of adjacent elements that have the same color. So what does this mean? This means that if you are having, let's suppose, five numbers, so every pair of adjacent elements should have a different color. So let's suppose you started this with red. So this should be colored red. This should be red. This should be red. And this should be blue and this should be blue. So this is what the question demands. The question demands you that if there is any possible D for which such a coloring is possible, then you return that D else return a value zero. Okay. This is what the question is. So before discussing the solution, let's first of all discuss what the expected time complexity for this question is. So if you all look, it is given that the number of test cases are of the order of 1000 and the value n, that is the size of the array, is of the order of 100. And it is not mentioned that the value of n, sum of n over all the test cases does not exceed some particular value. It is not mentioned something like this. So any solution that works in time complexity, let's suppose t into n or t into n square or something like big O of t square, something like this, will always give you an AC. But if you are having a solution that is working in, let's suppose, big O of t multiplied by, let's suppose, n cube or anything greater than this, like big O of t multiplied by n, uh, cube log n something like this will definitely give you TLE. So you have to design a solution that works within these time constraints, right? So, so how we can do this? So the first thing that comes to our mind is that if we are having an array of size n, okay, and what we have decided? We have decided that we are going to choose a positive integer d and all the elements that are divisible by D will be painted red, right? So, and, and we want that no pair of adjacent elements should have the same color. So red coloring can either start either from A1 
or it can either start from A2. Once it starts, once it starts with a particular index, like these are the only two possible options because these two indices cannot have the same color, right? So any one of them will definitely have the red color. So do you all agree that if I, let's suppose I am just taking an exam, I'm just explaining it with the size of the array as let's suppose six, okay? So let's suppose I have six elements. So if my red coloring starts from index one, so this will be colored red, this will be colored red, and this will be colored red, and this will be colored blue, this will be colored blue, and this will be colored blue, right? Similarly, if my red coloring starts from A2, then this will be colored red, this will be colored red, and this will be colored red, this will be colored blue, this will be colored blue, and this will be colored blue. So do you all agree that in this particular option, I will choose a D such that D divides A1, A3, A5, and does not divide A2, A4, and A6. Similarly, in this particular option, I will choose a D such that D divides A2, A4, A6, and it does not divide A1, A3, A5. So I have only two options to deal with, right? I have only two options to deal with. Either I am going to select a D that divides A1, A3, A5, or I am going to choose a D that is going to divide A2, A4, A6. Okay. Like for this particular example, for a random end, I am, I am going to choose a D that divides the value at odd indices. And in the second option, I am going to choose a D that divides the values at even indices. Okay. So, so now how to solve this? We know that we have only two options to deal with. How to solve it? So to explain or to further clarify that how we can actually think of it, let me take an example, okay? Let me tell you that let's suppose we have an array 30, 45, and uh, let's suppose we take it as 15, and over here we have 5, 10, and uh, let's suppose 20, okay? And I have decided that I'm going to color these as red, and the remaining ones, I want to color it with blue. Okay, this is what I have decided. So if I am telling that there is a D that divides both this, uh, that divides all of these 30, 45, and 50. So can I get a number D that divides all of these numbers? What does this, this, this mean? This means D can be at max the GCD of 30, 45, and 50, right? D can be GCD of 30, 45, and 15. And what it comes down to be? It comes out to be 15. GCD of 30, 45, and 15 is 15. So do you all agree that if I decide, if I take any of the factor of 15, if I take, let's suppose three, I take, suppose, let's suppose take five, I let's suppose uh, take like 15 as well. If I choose any of these numbers, if I take any of the divisors of 15, then they will definitely divide all of these 30, 45, and 50, like the these values, right? It will definitely do. But just tell me one thing, which of these three divisors would you like to choose? You know that you can't select any number greater than 15, and these are the possible options you have, but tell me which of the, which of the option which will you definitely like to uh, see? Which of the option will you definitely like to see? What we need to check, like let's suppose we are uh, taking five. So we need to check that this five does not divide any of the number A2, A4, and A6. Because then only I will be able to color these, the values present at these indices, the color blue. Then only it is possible, right? So tell me which of these possible three options in this particular example will you choose? Let's suppose you chose five. Okay, if you choose five, you can see that all of the, let me change this number a bit. Let me change this number to 18. Okay, let me change this number to 18. Now, if I, let's suppose, take the example as five, then you can see that number A2 and A4 are divisible by five. And if they are divisible by five, so I will color them as red as well. And if I do so, the condition that I want that no pair of adjacent elements should have the same color will be violated, right? Okay, 
let's explore the other option. Let's suppose we take 3. If we take 3, so just see, A2 does not get divisible by 3. A4 does not get divisible by 3. But E6 gets divisible by 3. And if it's so, it will be colored red. Adjacent elements will have the same color. And again, the condition will be violated. So the best possible option is, if we take, let's suppose, 5, you can clearly see that either of A2, A4 and A6 are, if I take this 15, so you can clearly see that either of A2, A4 and A6 are not divisible by 15. And hence, if I choose my D as 15, the conditions will be satisfied. So whenever you find, let's suppose whenever I select this, like these two options were violated and this taking 15 as my value of D satisfied the condition. So from here, I can draw the conclusion that if let's suppose I have these numbers A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 up till N, and I have decided that I am, I am going to start the coloring red from this index one. So first of all, I am, I am going to find the GCD of all the values at odd indices. And then I am going to check, let's suppose this GCD comes out to be GCD one then I am going to check that whether this number GCD1 divides any of the number present at even indices or not. If it not divides, I can definitely take this as my D and return this as my answer. If let's suppose this divides any of the numbers, then I'm going to check the second option now. What is the second option? The second option is I am going to start coloring red. I am going to start coloring red with numbers at even indices. So I'm first of all going to take the GCD of all the numbers at even indices. Let's suppose tell this as GCD2, GCD of all numbers at even indices. And once I get this, I will just check whether I will just check whether this number GCD2 divides any of the numbers at index A1, E3, A5, all, all indices I will check. And if it does not divide, I will return this GCD2. And if I am not able to return either GCD1 or GCD2 as my answer. I will say that no number is possible, no positive integer I can take such so that uh, the pair of adjacent elements have different color. And hence, in that case, I will simply return zero. So this is how I can solve this question. The main check in this question was there were two observations. The first observation is that you have only two possible options. Either you start coloring red from index one or you start coloring red from index two. The next thing to figure it out was if you want to, let's suppose you start coloring at index one, you first of all take, you want to find all, a number that divides all of these numbers. So for that, first of all, you take GCD of all the numbers uh, at odd indices. And now the possible D values that you can take are the divisors of this GCD. But the best possible scenario would be if you take D as the entire GCD and not any of its divisors. So these were the two observations to make. And once you do that, you will be very much clear with your code. So let's understand the code so that the things become more clear. So first of all, I took number of test cases as input. Then I took the n, the basically the array size as input and took the array as input. Then I initialized my GCD one with zero and GCD two with zero. Then these are basically the GCDs for numbers in odd indices and even indices respectively. Then I went over all the indices from 0 till lesser than n. If my value of i is odd, then in that case, I am just updating GCD2 with GCD of GCD2 common number. Else, I am updating GCD1 with GCD of GCD1 comma V of i. So basically, GCD1 over here stores the GCD of all the numbers at even indices. GCD2 stores the GCD of all the numbers at odd indices. Then what I did, I initially initialized my flag to true. And now I am just assuming that I am going to take D as GCD1. So basically, I am going to start coloring from the first index, that is from index 0. So now what I need to check, I need to check whether the numbers at odd indices does not get divisible, does not get divided by GCD1, right? So I'm going over all the odd indices starting from 1. At every scene, I am in simply incrementing my i by 2. If my number is divisible by GCD1, so this means I can't take D as GCD1. So in that case, I'm just making my flag as false and I am simply breaking. If after this, my value of flag is still true, 
This means I can definitely take D as GCD1. So I will simply print GCD1 and move on to the next test case. And for that, I simply wrote continue. Otherwise, if let's suppose flag would have become false, I will just come out of, I will just avoid this if condition, right? So again, I'm making flag as true. And now I will try to see whether I can take D as GCD2 or not. And how will I be able to check that? For that, I need to go over all the event indices and need to check whether the value present at event indices gets divisible by GCG2 or not. So I will just go over all the event indices starting from zero. At every case, I am simply incrementing my index with two. If the number gets divisible by GCG2, this means I can't take GCG2 as my D as well. And in that case, I simply make my flag as false and print. If my flag is true, I will simply print GCG2. If my flag is false and I have explored both the possible options, this means I don't have any D to take. In that case, I am simply printing C. So this is how for every test case, I can just print my answer. Now, if I discuss the time complexity, so T is for while loop, that is for test cases. Then you have a loop of N. You have T over here. And over here, then you have a loop of N. And uh, since uh, like uh, you are calculating GCD, so GCD, the time complexity of GCD of two numbers A and B is log of maximum of A comma B. And you know that over here, the maximum the number can go up till is 1E18. So I can take this loop as GCD of, I can take this loop as having the time complexity of N log 1E18. Because the maximum number is 1E18, right? Then again, over here, I'm just running a loop of N. So this takes a complexity of n and this takes a complexity of n. So the total time complexity over here becomes we go of t multiplied by n log 1e18, which will definitely pass the test cases, right? And similarly, if I discuss the space complexity, so if you all look, I am constructing a vector of size n for every test case. And rest, I am not using any extra space. So the space complexity, you can also say it is big O of t multiplied by n. So this is the space complexity and this is the time complexity well within the constraints and will definitely give you easy. So I hope all of you understood it well. Thank you.